Dan Kentish on LBC. 5.51, before we talk more about winter fuel payments and lots more besides, it's been a big, big week stateside. Kamala Harris officially becoming the Democrat Party's presidential nominee at this week's Democratic National Convention. Here is Simon Marks, LBC's Washington correspondent, with his American Week. Ben, there is no possible way that in the time available I can do justice to the scale of what the Democrats sought to achieve here in Chicago this week. It is a measure of the dire straits in which they found themselves just five weeks ago that they were forced to attempt the rapid high-wire turnaround that political veterans did not believe was possible in the middle of an American election campaign. And yet, by the time the balloons had dropped last night, their transition to a new presidential ticket was complete. I am thrilled to reaffirm Kamala Harris as the Democratic nominee for President of the United States. The delegates at the Democratic National Convention, well, they just completed their roll call. They have nominated Coach Walls and me to be the next Vice President and President of the United States of America. Thank everyone there and here for believing in what we can do together. We are so honored to be your nominees. This is a people-powered campaign, and together we will chart a new way forward. That was on Tuesday, Kamala Harris stealing a march on Donald Trump by appearing at a rally in the very arena in Milwaukee, where Republicans held their convention last month, beaming her delight into the Democratic Party's convention in Chicago, moments after delegates officially proclaimed her their standard bearer for November. The week has been filled with political theatre that delighted attendees at this convention and possibly television viewers from coast to coast. But it started with the need to get the awkward stuff out of the way. I made a lot of mistakes in my career, but I gave my best to you. For 50 years, like many of you, I've given my heart and soul to our nation. Too young to be in the Senate because I wasn't 30 yet. And too old to stay as president. I can honestly say I'm more optimistic about the future than I was when I was elected as a 29-year-old United States senator. I mean it. Joe Biden, perhaps by accident, maybe by design, consigned not only to the thin end of the convention its first night, but things ran so late it was past midnight on the East Coast by the time his valedictory address ended. And then he was gone, spending the rest of the week out of sight on holiday in California, insisting before he boarded Air Force One that he still thinks he would have beaten Trump in November, and that no, he has not spoken to Nancy Pelosi, his now former friend, who orchestrated his ouster from the presidential race. I wish my mother and Kamala's mother could see us. They would say, keep going. There was no similar rancor on display from Hillary Clinton. Defeated by Donald Trump in 2016, she offered a full-throated insistence that the future is now and that Democrats must help Kamala Harris smash through the glass ceiling that she proved unable to shatter. With faith in each other and joy in our hearts, let's send Kamala Harris and Tim Walls to the White House. There were so many memorable moments at this convention that any review will leave most of them on the cutting room floor. Bill Clinton pointing out that he's younger than Donald Trump. Barack Obama questioning Trump's manhood in a well-rehearsed mention of crowd size. Stevie Wonder urging Americans to choose courage over complacency. Oprah Winfrey, a surprise guest, with the shout of the convention. We're all Americans, and together, let's all choose Kamala Harris! And former First Lady Michelle Obama again reminding Democrats that she may be the best possible presidential candidate never to have put her name in the hopper and preparing them for Trump to attack Kamala Harris. My husband and I sadly know a little something about this. (laughs) For years, Donald Trump did everything in his power to try to make people fear us. See, his, his limited, narrow view of the world 
made him feel threatened by the existence of two hardworking, highly educated, successful people who happen to be black. tell him that the job he's currently seeking might just be one of those black jobs. That's a reference to Trump's claim in his TV debate with Biden that illegal immigrants were taking black jobs in America. How to follow it? Kamala Harris's running mate, Governor Tim Walls of Minnesota, a former high school football coach scoring an extraordinary touchdown. Our job for everyone watching is to get in the trenches and do the blocking and tackling. One inch at a time, one yard at a time, one phone call at a time, one door knock at a time, one $5 donation at a time. We got 76 days. That's nothing. There'll be time to sleep when you're dead. We're going to leave it on the field. On the other side, Trump is flailing, struggling to find language to assail Harris over her record, her policies and her beliefs. Instead, he watched the convention, got infuriated by it and keeps churning out nonsense like this. They mentioned my name, I think, 271 times. They mentioned the economy like 12 times. They mentioned the border, maybe none. They don't talk about the border. But they mentioned me more than any other category. I'm now a category. They had me down today as a category. That's all they talk about. Trump. We've driven them crazy. They have Trump derangement syndrome. On behalf of everyone whose story could only be written in the greatest nation on earth, I accept your nomination. Last night, it was Kamala Harris's turn, scaffolded as she had been all week long by the biggest stars in the Democratic Party's firmament. She pledged to be a president for all Americans, assailed Trump as an unserious man who poses an extremely serious threat to the country, and urged Americans to imagine exactly what the US might look like if he wins in 73 days. Consider his explicit intent to set free violent extremists who assaulted those law enforcement officers at the Capitol. His explicit intent to jail journalists, political opponents, and anyone he sees as the enemy. His explicit intent to deploy our active duty military against our own citizens. Consider Consider the power he will have, especially after the United States Supreme Court just ruled that he would be immune from criminal prosecution. Just imagine Donald Trump with no guardrails. Now make no mistake, it was a good speech, but it wasn't anywhere near close to the soaring rhetoric of Michelle and Barack Obama earlier in the week. Though Kamala Harris, traditionally more comfortable in a courtroom or a Senate hearing than delivering speeches, did her best to give delegates the big send-off. So let's get out there. Let's fight for it. Let's get out there. Let's vote for it. And together, let us write the next great chapter in the most extraordinary story ever told. Thank you all. The convention ended without the much vaunted appearance of a mystery guest. Democrats did nothing to damp down persistent reports about Beyonce's possible arrival at the venue. In the end, they have to hope that Kamala Harris carried the night and the week and that, Ben, she will now carry the election as well. And that was Simon Mark's American Week.